go. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? I'm feeling good because it says we're now live and it has not yet kicked us off. So <laughs> I, I think we're here to stay. And uh, last week. week. <laughs> good morning. I'm doing okay. I have a I have a headache. I feel like I've had, I'm calling it a blizzard headache. Um, I realized we didn't technically have a blizzard, but um, <laughs> it just seems like with whatever front has moved through, like every, it never yeah. fully went away and it's, it's kind of back now. And I don't think I'm the only one. <laughs> Oh, Darren is joining us from the Kroger coffee aisle. Oh I my God. Great. I am honored you were on, on your shopping trip. Good morning, Good morning Judith. Judith. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess we should introduce ourselves. Do you want to? I okay. can't remember who went first. Um, I don't I don't know. I'll go first. Hi. I'm mm -hmm. Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. So that means I get to do all the adult fun stuff, books, magazines, that kind of stuff. So, yep, that's who I am. All right. I am Allison. I'm the technical services librarian here at Fairfield County. Um, you lift up your drinking your coffee today. I'm, I'm back to um, my chai tea latte, but I purchased a brand that has half, fully half the sugar of that other brand I was drinking. And let me tell you. Not as good. <laughs> but hi Chris. And happy Valentine's Day to you too. Oh yeah, happy Valentine's Day. Um, and so a lot of times we show what we're reading. I am reading um currently this book called These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. Um, this book came out last year and I actually read it last year. Um it was one of the books I had checked out when we closed for oh. the pandemic. Yeah. And I don't know if we've talked about this before, but we often talk about how many books we have checked out and then we just have to return them. But during that time that we were closed during the pandemic, even though everything was very serious in the back of my head, I was like, well, you know what? You're going to read all these books you have checked out from the library. You have a stretch of time. You better read these books. And um, I still didn't read them all, but it was because um, like I did look at them all. The ones I didn't read were like, you know what? Actually, I'm not interested in this. It, yeah. I read all the ones I was interested in. And this was one of them. And I liked it enough that um, I selected it for my book club book club pick in one of the book yeah. clubs I'm going to take turns picking. And so um, it is a, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit different, but I really, really like it. It was a book. Um, it's a debut novel and it goes back and forth or not really back and forth. Every section is a different person's perspective and mm -hmm. it jumps around in time. So sometimes you're back, sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're way ahead, sometimes you go back again. And it basically kind of looks at the impact um, of this man's decision to basically take over another person's life. He and another man are working and the one man is killed and mm -hmm. basically allows that to be, they think that it was him who got killed and he allows them to essentially fake his death and then he comes into a whole new life. And so this is sort of the whole book explores the impact of that decision. And so I do recommend it. It was written by somebody who is, I believe a librarian, which I knew when one of the characters was doing like this evaluation of resources type of paper. And I was like, mm, that sounds like a librarian project to me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I do recommend that book. That's what I'm reading. Um, I am reading Crimson Lake by Candace Fox. She's an Australian author. And, um, you know, so the book is taking place in Australia. And he's um, in the part of Australia where it's really warm. So they're talking about how it's warm from time to time and all um, the palms in the background. So it's just like, oh, nice warm weather. But totally um, different. <laughs> always good. And if you're into like dark, gritty um, mysteries, I really recommend this. Um, I'm listening to it. I got it on um, Overdrive, and um, it's, it's a series featuring the same characters. Um, I, this is the first in the series. Uh, I haven't read any other ones because I like to read things in order, but I really like it. And um, Allison, does the name Candace Fox mean anything to you? No, it does in the sense that I have a feeling of annoyance when I hear it. And I don't know if it's justified annoyance, but I know that her name, when you said it, I was like, who's that again? And why do I feel irritated? Yeah. Um, in 2019, there was an issue with, I think it's 2019, right? Because it wasn't last year. It must have been 2019. 
Because we're, we're, we're for yeah, 2019. I think it was, I double check me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, in 2019, Candace Fox and James Patterson re released book four in the series that they write together. Well, the annoyance and, is all floating back. I remember this now. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was in Australia first under the title Hush Hush. Because the other books in that that series are like Liar Liar, 50-50. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something, some, I forget what the other one is. But yeah. like the same word twice. And it was released yeah. in Australia with the title Hush Hush. But then they didn't release it in the United States. It just wasn't published yet here. Yeah, and you're right. I think this was 2019 that it was released in Australia because we were definitely at work in normal times when that yes. was happening. Yes. I don't think it was released. It may have been like March when it finally was released here. But when it was released in the United States, it had the title Hush. And everyone wanted this book, Hush, Hush. Because, you know, the newest James Patterson, but it wasn't released in the United States yet. But one of the libraries in the consortium, not naming names, went on Amazon and bought from a third party seller. It wasn't even Amazon selling it. Hush, hush. And so we had the UK version in, in the catalog. And like that one copy had like 500 holds on it because, you know, Everyone wants to read the new James Patterson. Mm -hmm. And it was a nightmare. And like typically, we don't go on Amazon to order our books because, you know, when we're ordering 20 copies of a book by an author, we want to get those from our book vendor where we get significant discounted price. <laughs> so, Library printing. Yeah. So um, there was all kinds of issues with that. So that's that's why you got that feeling of annoyance when you hear that name. Yeah. But, yeah, because I had to keep looking into that and being like, why, where is this book? Why do we not have this book yet? We have every every new James Patterson release comes to us on time. Why do we not have this? Right. And it hadn't even been released in the United States yet. And so we had to like pull that back. I can't remember how we handled it as a consortium if we, I, think, I don't remember, but. I think we just kind of like let, I think we. Well, when we did get we the other book. All of the holds from the one book to the, to the mm -hmm. new book. But since it was there and in the system, it was going right. out. So. Right, and then we did eventually get the the other one. Right. But then the the American no, version later. Hush has to have like a note in it that says like originally released in Australia as Hush Hush because that is the that is a different title of that exact same essentially same work. And then to complicate matters further, I had yes another instance of annoyance when we got this book in in this past December, or the new Stuart Woods book was called Hush Hush. Okay. And I, I, suspect, I suspect is why that's why they changed the name of the Patterson book to just Hush. I bet you were right. In the series are like Liar Liar, 50-50. I think that's why they yeah. changed the title. Um, yeah. But it was, yeah, I think separately, we both spent like two hours trying to figure out what was going on. Right. And, <laughs> I remember being on the James Patterson website and not seeing any evidence of this hush right, hush book. Right. But yeah. then we were on the Candace Fox website and we're like, it's out. It's out in Australia. What is this? I do remember that. And then, like I said, that Stuart Woods book came in relatively recently. And like I had this flashback of like, hush hush. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was over. But Stuart Woods also has a hyphen in his title. Yeah. It is hush hyphen hush. Yes. So that was that was that was great. But I saw that that, that name and I'm like, oh. I was like, you know what? Oh. The description of this book sounds really good. I'm going to give it a try anyway. <laughs> yes. So then my question is, you're are you enjoying it? And can we rescind our annoyance? And it turns out it was just circumstance, and it's not her fault. Um, I I doubt it was her fault. <laughs> okay. I think uh, I'm going to lay the blame solely at the feet of the publishers. Yeah. And I'm really enjoying this book and okay. the quirky characters and the guy adopting a random goose because it's there and injured and the goslings follow him around like they've been printed on him and like <laughs> but that's oh my like God. Stuff. there's all this other bad stuff like alligators and murders and assaults. Yeah, it's 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 lots of it, it's want for someone who doesn't like violence. So Okay. So it's a violent book, not for somebody who is disturbed or grossed out. But if you're a cozy reader, do not read Crimson Lake. But if you like the idea of little goslings running around, <laughs> you might have to make a decision, a tough decision. Well, the thing that I wanted to report to you is that we're going to go back. We're going to go back to this. Um, 
couple weeks ago, Leah recommended the only astrology book you ever need as a way to learn about astrology and possibly do your natal chart. And I was like, okay, sure. And I wrote the title down. And then recently I was in my own library at home, my personal book collection, and realized I owned that and forgotten about it. Um, because I did, like I said, I did buy it at the bargain table of Walden Books. So that was a very long time ago. That's I think I did too. <laughs> so I was like this week, I was like, well, you know what, I'll go ahead. I'll like look at it and I'll see about doing this natal chart we talked about. So, you know, I can report back on the show as I said I would. And it's a very detailed book. Um, goes through a lot of different things and it goes through like it explains what you would find on your natal chart before you even do it so it says you know like if this planet is in each of these houses what does that mean if this planet's in these houses so I was like kind of skimming through that and like okay you know this is getting a handle on what I was gonna have to do and then I flip a page and I open it up and I discover I made my natal chart you did it. When I got this book I made my natal chart in ninth grade or whatever. And I was like, oh, well, fantastic. You don't have to redo it. <laughs> I don't have to redo it. Nothing has changed. All that remains the same. So I have everything written out. I have, you know, my houses and the planets that are in them. And then on the back, I even like, I made like a, I made some type of a reference list for myself of what's ruled by what, I don't know. So I actually had all this information. So I did, that saved me all that time. Completely forgot I did that. Um, so that was kind of exciting and hilarious to find in that book. But and it's getting funnier and funnier that you, you know. know book. I know. You <laughs> all memory of this book. Clearly, clearly. So I guess I can check that off. Done that. Um, I did notice when I was, so I was then like reading, you know, some of the things that were in houses and um, what does this mean for me and everything. And one of the things that was kind of cracking me up is they would say like the good the good of this being in this house and the bad of this being in this house. And some of the extreme bads um, included that I may be estranged from my children based on one of like the things being in one house. And uh, I have, I might experience, I might have like quite a bit of danger from secret enemies. So these were things that I really need to keep in mind. I never considered myself someone who might have secret enemies. And honestly, it kind of is exciting to think that I do. Yeah. Secret enemies. What well, would anyways, you do to get secret enemies, I'm wondering. Right. Like secret enemies too, not just like enemies, you know, right. maybe you yeah. know, we all make enemies or whatever, probably, but uh people who don't even know enemies. your enemies. <laughs> so. Anyway, so I wanted to update you on that. Um, of what came out of secret enemies. I'm very intrigued. I want more. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll have to study it more deeply. Yeah. <laughs> see what, this, what the stars are telling me. Um, but yeah, so I just, I wanted to give give everybody that further update. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I am very glad you shared that. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> uh, mine's always like, you're going to have trouble with your feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I too, I've got the worst feet. Oh my God. Do you roll your ankles and stuff like that? You know, I don't roll my ankles, but um, I have... <sighs> I've got like excessively wide feet, like wide with shoes are often not wide enough for me. I get this from my dad's mother. It totally from her. Uh, she had these feet too. <laughs> yes, I got Betty's feet. Um, but <laughs> and I also have like very like low arches. So mm -hmm. like no shoes have like arch support where I need them. So I have a very difficult time finding shoes that are comfortable. And then, um, like, yes, they're just, they're very hard time finding comfortable shoes. And then, but they also have to have enough support or like, you know, my feet and my back hurt. Wow. But the sport is never in the right spot for my feet. So wow. it's just, yes, I, I, I do have trouble with my feet. <laughs> it's written in the stars. Yeah. Andrea <laughs> says she uh, also has trouble. <laughs> You and me both. Um, yeah. Well, I had no idea that the stars could be so specific um, mm -hmm. about both feet and, uh, you know, secret enemies. <laughs> she feels this pain in her soul. <laughs> nice. Yes. Wordplay. <laughs> I also brought to share, not that this anybody cares about this, but just. Uh, with the weather and the snow that we've had this week, which has been truly very exciting. 
also I will admit sometimes stressful when it comes to driving, but um, I love that just, we don't normally get this much and you know, we just, to have it just be on the ground, like long-term is so fun and everything. And I have a few pairs of like, um, of like snow earrings and normally I wear them like one time a year. And now I've gotten to wear all three pairs and I probably will continue to wear them. <laughs> Um, I have like snowy trees on today, but this is my favorite because it's this little penguin, um, like skiing. Or something. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just celebrating because I get to wear my I get to wear my snow earrings, and we just don't normally have like such like a wintry landscape yeah. that lasts. Uh, oh, I do have to drive to work, Liz. Yeah, we're not working from home anymore. No. Yeah, we're at home during the filming of this show, but then we got to go into work. Yeah, when you stay at home, sorry, I was just gonna say we sorry. stay at home because of the way that this goes through the internet. It just seems to work better here, but we yeah. then go to work every day. So yes, there was definitely some driving drama and trauma that <laughs> there were. There, I had some moments, but I made it. Liz actually knows about this because she has given me rides in bad weather before so i don't lose my mind <laughs> thank you liz uh kai my my, my dog sorry i'm pointing over there because that's where he is um <laughs> he um he's a very short dog he's you know so i had to actually go out and shovel a place in the snow for him to go to the bathroom <laughs> oh my god he's higher than his legs yeah yes and, uh, and uh Oh yeah, so he he was not a fan. And when I came back inside, like it was one of the days I had taken him out. I went out with him. It was so bright and sunny, and I came back inside, and all I could see was like this green bright flash in front of my face. Mm -hmm. No blindness. It was like too bright. Oh, I know, I know. Even when the sun isn't out, like I was sitting here at my table. There's a window right here, and like my eyes were beginning to hurt facing that direction, even though the sun isn't out right now. It's just everything is reflecting so brightly. It's like and when you're on yesterday. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yesterday we were in a meeting, a video meeting together, Leah and I and some other people. And at the end of it, I was like, "It's snowing here again." Um, my car was covered, not like measurably, but my car was coated. Um, my coworker's car was coated. I was watching it like it was heavy, like big flakes and it was like swirling around. And when we go to leave, we walk outside and our other coworker's cars don't have any snow on it. As it turns out, all that was blowing off of the roof and it landed on our cars because we were parked right there. And so we, yesterday, even though it did not snow again, we had to scrape our cars for like five minutes. We had to run our thing and scrape, it all hardened and everything. And it turns out it was just all blowing off the roof. So I was like, tomorrow, let's park someplace else. <laughs> because no. it's going to blow off there for probably quite some time. There's a lot of it. Yeah, we have trouble at our library where the, the, the slant of the roof <laughs> makes for, you know, eventually the snow will just kind of like fall no. on the sidewalk, which no. isn't great when people are walking along the sidewalk. No. It's like just out of nowhere, it's like avalanche. <laughs> Oh my God. No, it just comes and knocks you down. So, oh no. Yeah, I, oh I, no, I know that would happen to me at some point. I know I'd yeah. be the one under it. Oh, yeah. that's terrible. I was out there. It was one Saturday. It was it was happening. And I was out there like trying to clean up the mess on the sidewalk when yeah. another bit of it let go and hit me. And I was just. <laughs> and oh no. People just keep walking into the library like, right. we don't care. Like, I'm trying to keep you safe, but whatever. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, speaking of cleaning up methods, I don't know that I should, that this is a great conversation for on here, but uh, there's been a hawk that has been um, kind of terrorizing the birds in our garden. And we always have, I mean, it's it's nature. And uh, we're kind of like sort of out. It's a, even though we're a highway location and it's sort of rural where we are, yeah. there's like this lots of trees and stuff. And so we have bald eagles out there. We have hawks. They're just part of it, part of the landscape. But we also have a lot of songbirds and the hawk needs to eat too. And last Friday when I got in after doing the show, um, I had to clean up a bit of a situation. Uh, the hawk the hawk had a meal and most of the evidence of the meal was gone, but there were a lot of feathers everywhere. And apparently there had just been this really big loud noise. And we think that the hawk kind of like, may have, maybe he almost lost it, but he may have like, it against the building 
So there was just kind of like a situation. And um, I was like, I am, I, I was glad I basically, I ultimately, I was glad I wasn't there because I would have probably actually seen it happen. They just kind of heard it. And then we're like, Ooh, I think we know what happened here. So um, anyway, speaking of cleaning up messes at work, when you, things you just don't expect that you're going to be doing that day, mm. you know, someone's got to do Your location has like the most unusual animal situations. Like with the raccoon and the <laughs> oh, dark day, <laughs> and it was like really because we lost our electricity because a raccoon got electro electrocuted and uh, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're and like the snake, it in, in oh, the, yeah, yeah, we had the snake in the building that one day. That was shocking. Yeah. That was shocking yeah. and disturbing. Your, your location yeah. has like the most fun with animals. Fun. It is <laughs> definitely fun. That's what I would call it. Well, the most unusual yes. situations. Yes, no, we do, and it is. It's a beautiful again for being like on a highway. You know, we're right there, but um, we have a really pretty landscape. So, yes. yes, Andrea, a snake in the building. It was admittedly pretty small, but my the way I describe it is, I work indoors. I work indoors all day, all the time, and I, you just you, there shouldn't be a doors like yes it wasn't that big but it was inside and so my poor co-worker she's moving these bins around she pulls one forward and it was between the bins just in our workspace and she was like oh there's a snake and I was like what oh there, there's a snake what and then we did that for a while and then I went back and looked at it and I, we didn't know it what to do snake. it was a snake it was oh it was absolutely a snake Liz it was a snake. It was not a worm. No, it was not a worm. It was a real snake. We think it was a milk snake. It was black. It ended up, we got some help from somebody who is much more capable than us. And uh, she threw it into the grass and it all worked out okay. But I didn't think I was afraid of snakes. And I don't think I am if they're out outdoors. I but. think it's more that you encounter it where it's not supposed to be. And that is scary. It's oranges from your hand while you're just doing your indoor quiet job. Yeah. Not a wildlife wrangler. I don't work at a zoo. <laughs> when I was when I was I was working the reference desk once at the university, and it was like it was finals week, so like the the reference area was packed. You, you, the undergraduate library at IU. Do you remember? Did you, did you spend much time there? Packed. I remember. Like, yeah. Hundreds of computers there. It's mm -hmm. a very big area. Not anymore. And, They've changed it, but yes, that was a well, lot at the time. And yeah. um, I'm sitting there at the reference desk, and it's very quiet. And like out of the corner of my eye, I see a spider drop. You know, just it was it was you know just spider. It wasn't like it wasn't tiny, but it wasn't like super large. Mm -hmm. it just it, it like dropped it right there in the corner, and I saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I screamed. And like the entire room turns and looks at me and I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I scream at spiders too at work. And it's not, I know it, that seems extreme, but when you see, I don't like, it's when it surprises you, like you said, exactly. it's not like. I'm not afraid of spiders, but. <laughs> well, another thing I was startled the other day, a friend of mine gave me an air plant for Christmas mm -hmm. and she gave it to me like, on this little like clear, like fishing line type of thing. So I could just hang it from somewhere. And I've been trying to find different places to hang it. Um, Cause I don't want to get too much light. Not, you know, the whole thing. So I've had it hanging in a new place and I went, <laughs> I went into that room and because I couldn't see the fishing line and it's just like, I mean, air plants have this like look to them. It was just hanging there like against a, a light colored wall and I just turned on the light and I jumped in the air and then I haven't told her this yet, but I cursed her and I was like, I don't know if I can do this, but I can, I can do it. I just need to put it in a place where that's not going to happen again. But I definitely, it'd been a long week and that air plant was the last thing. It was just the yeah. straw that broke the camel's back. <laughs> it's so easy to get startled by things like that when they're somewhere you're not expecting them. Yes. This is not as elegant as green. Mine's like, help. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I, love I, I can't yes. even hear that sound, Andrea. No, her scream sounds like Y E E A A L L B. So, yeah, that's, that's a, that is, that's impressive. That's a good one. When you talk about things not being where you expect them to be, 
I do have a story in which I jumped very high in the air and had a very physical reaction that I will admit in the moment I thought was subtle. And as it turns out, based on the reaction of everyone around me, it was not. And it was because I went down, we were at a restaurant. It was actually, um, I believe it was the Trojan horse. And I went down a set of stairs mm -hmm. and on the left side at the base of the stairs was a phone booth. No, a payphone. And I was not expecting to see a payphone. <laughs> Apparently, it startled me. I jumped. Yes, I jumped high in the air, and it was just I couldn't couldn't take it. And Andrea was there; she saw it. And I've also been frightened. The reason why that was um, in conjunction with the phone booth is because I've also been frightened by that phone booth in Cherry Street Pub, where there's a mannequin the in mannequin? it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's also alarming. So just something isn't where you think it's going to be or whatever, and then. I am one of those people I startle very easily, and I don't, I don't even know why I'm about to admit this, but when I'm, <laughs> when I'm scared and I scream, I also do that, I, I run in place. Oh, so you do it with your feet? Yes. I, I, I will run in place while I scream, and um, I... <laughs> Oh my gosh. My, I overreact to a degree that is comical and it is just, I think someone was trying to break into my house one night and I went to look and I looked out the window and I screamed and I did that run in place thing. And I think I scared the person who's trying to break into my house. It was just one of those. I remember that. And like, that's a, like, we're laughing about this, but it was, that was not great when someone was trying to get into your home. Right. That was Yes. But I, I not think story. my reaction scared them enough that they did not come back. <laughs> I think that your fright, yes, was they were like, you know what? We just can't handle this. Yeah. <laughs> this is just too much. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, and I think the way you react to things then perhaps in situations more like situations they keep everyone else around you from being afraid like if you reacted like that to the snake if you'd been with us with the snake we probably all would have just been laughing because you know like you brought some lightheartedness to it i bring the comic relief <laughs> someone's got to do it and i also like um adding sound effects like when i open a box I'm like Shh. like I yeah, right? that kind of stuff like out of nowhere because life deserves a soundtrack right <laughs> I agree. I think that that sounds great. And, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, you're just enhancing things. You're just enhancing things. And I think for people who do spend a lot of time alone, um, so sometimes you just got to fill, got to fill your space a little bit like that. And quiet, you know, like working in the library is very quiet. So sometimes you're just like, you, you need, you need noises to accompany what's happening. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we didn't talk about really any of the stuff that I told Mary to say in our description that we were going to talk about, um, which was like garden stuff because it had snowed. And really, I think traditionally February is a time when a lot of people plan I like their that. gardens. I'm enhancing the natural landscape. Soundscape. <laughs> Soundscape. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. That's, <laughs> that sounds very technical, very official, very like something that needs to happen. Enhancing the natural sound. Oh, Mary says she's used to us telling her we're going to talk about something and then we don't. So, but it's you got a description in there. Some like you got to put something in there. So, come find out what they talk about this week. Right. We don't know. We don't know. But we do. We do plan and stuff. It's just that we get on here and then we get talking. Um, because I brought it home though, I am going to show you this because it's really cool. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily like I think it's a great book to get from. Well, you know what? I think it'd be great for anybody, but maybe from the library first to see if you would want it to own yeah. it. Um, it's called What to Watch When, 1,000 TV Shows for Every Mood and Moment. And yeah. I think we all, many of us, at least those of us who have streaming services, have had that feeling of like, well, I want to watch something, but yeah, I have to like, you can't just turn on the TV to a channel. You have like get turned on Netflix and you're like, but what thing on Netflix do I watch? I don't yeah. know. And so this um, goes by... Like kind of the the chapters are actually on the spot or on the pages. Like this is the spine of the book. These are the pages of the book. And so it goes by like kind of what vibe you want to have. So what to watch when? When you want to get your pulse racing, when you have three generations on one sofa, you want to escape to a different time, you want a cozy night in, et cetera, et cetera, including you feel like wallowing or you just want to switch off. 
And so those are the sections. And then each section has, um, of course, suggestions. But what I like about it is um, most of them are like this. And so it's a very short description mm -hmm. of it. And it explains um, kind of like the vibe you'll get from it. But my favorite sections are where they feature one big Hold on, let me find one. Sorry, guys. I really did have it pulled up and then I opened it up to a weird spot. Um, sometimes they do this big section. I don't know. Hard to fix. So this is my so-called my so-called life. So they give you more information for something like this, and they have like a little um a little graph to go along with it. So it's not just one big list of things. Yeah. There are a few other like features throughout but i just think it's like such a super fun idea i've never seen anything i've seen colored pages but i've never mm -hmm. seen anything with text on the page like that That's um cool. yeah and i don't know it just i just thought it was especially handy here in the winter time when you're like i think i've watched everything i want to watch but i just i just want to yeah. switch up or i need a really good laugh and you could pick something from that section yeah that that is a really cool book and mary agrees she says she needs that book Liz says she has lots of garden plans already and that oh. you need to come, we need to come tour there. So I would love to tour Liz Liz's garden. And yes, we will I'm sure we will talk about garden plans at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. We just thought and we just thought because it was snowy and it's February, it might be a time to do that, but we got carried away with other things. I every year I think I'm going to tackle mittens and knit some mittens and I or gloves or like fingerless mm -hmm. probably we'll start out with fingerless gloves mm -hmm. but every year I will check out a book and be like oh let's knit and then I'm like Leah it's February it's the you know, by the time you get these done it'll be June like what are you doing wait until yeah. you need them to think about knitting them so I yeah. uh, Need to plan better for next year, <laughs> but I really, I really, I really want some some fingerless gloves. Yeah. So should you check the book out in June then? Yeah. Remind me. <laughs> but no, one, no one wants to sit and look at mittens probably in June either. Like that's not on your mind. Yeah. That's when you. I. That's when you're knitting yourself. I don't know. You don't wait. There's nothing you knit for summertime, right? Right. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't make a pair of shorts. That would be terrible. I just see like <laughs> knit bathing suits and stuff. I'm like, wow. No, I'm more of the t shirt and shorts to the beach kind of gal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm more of the please don't let me get eaten by a shark or stung by a jellyfish or get swept away. Like, you know what? I'll here i will watch it's very pretty i'll go get my feet wet and then i'll come back <laughs> yeah i think maybe like late september like when the weather starts to change it's just that little chill in the air maybe that's when i'll be like yeah i'm gonna do this now yeah but i just i, I just think those those little fingerless gloves yes they just that way no oh, let's do that again yeah. Leah, I've seen everything but the glove. Now I'm seeing her waistband. She had a glove in her pocket. Sorry. Your hand in her pocket. Okay. I don't know. I, well, I totally support you. It's fine. I, I totally you support you, though. Coachella. <laughs> no. <laughs> Your face, Allison. <laughs> I can't hide it. I can't hide it. What's that thing about not needing a mood ring because you have a face? <laughs> like, <laughs> just all plugged out there and you can't keep it in. <laughs> yeah. I give, I give some looks. The best of us do. Yes. Well, I guess maybe next week. Next week we might have a different plan. Um, we may have something. Who knows? We may have something in the works next week. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very excited for next week. If things if things work out how we plan, I think next week will be really fun. Um, and we'll talk about gardening again. Yes, we always do. <laughs> we always do. You'll all hear about the raccoons. You'll all hear about how all my plants are dying. It'll <laughs> it'll be a flashback to last year. It'll be great. Yeah. 
All right, are we calling it for today? I think so. We've we've rambled long enough. But All right. thank you for joining us yet again. We love seeing you. Yes, we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.